Okay, I think I'm live. I don't know why it was private before, but I think it's going now. Um, I see a live chat. Hi, everyone. Sorry if uh, you're watching this in the future and uh, you're having to watch all this. I'm just getting set up and Cinco Paul should be joining soon and we can get to... Get to our uh, March Madness song break uh, breakdown bracket uh, madness. I think no one's watching yet, which is fine. But I just want to make sure that everything's good and I'm streaming. Okay, want to make sure people can hear me. Can people? Hear me? Whoa. Anyone's watching. No one's watching it, it seems. Hey, oh, there's some there's some uh, comments there. KitCast, hey, Broadway Dork 23, Chris Butler, Nor Rora Noel, and Studio Todd. Hey, can you all hear me? I can. Thank you, Studio Todd. All right. Hey everybody. How's it going? I'm I'm watching, I'm looking at YouTube right now. Instead of Zoom, so it's a little bit, bit of a delay on the camera, but I want to see your comments. Um, looking and sounding okay thus far. Thank you. So, yeah, KCAST, thank you. Yeah, it was unexpected and fun, but it's a blast. Yay, thank you, Ken Alphabet. Yay, I'm glad you guys can hear me. Welcome. Um, sort of an impromptu-ish uh, Saturday night schmigadoon song bracket breakdown. Cinco Paul should be here Uh at any any minute now um and and we can get started i'm super super nervous um <laughs> not only to to choose these songs one on one like these i love every song from from schmigadoon in chicago i'm sure you'll hear me say that a thousand times tonight but it's going to be hard and then to do it in front of cinco paul what that's crazy um so I see my my daughter is <laughs> in the Hi Lily. Hi, sweetheart. You should be going to sleep, but that's okay. Um I don't want to miss Cinco. I keep going over. Um I told him to come anytime after eight. Um any particular song you're rooting to make it far? I mean so hard. I love I love a lot of the season one songs. I know season, I mean, I love the season two ones as well, but I think, I don't know. I think people are going to be surprised by some of my choices. I think I might have some controversial picks in there. So we shall see. We'll see what happens. Um, um, <laughs> yes, that is what happens when you tweet something to me, Broadway Dork. You, you are responsible for this whole thing. I blame you if this goes wrong. I'm just kidding, of course. Uh, those, those, there are some devastating first round uh, picks in there that I, uh, oof, I, I don't even know how I'm going to choose. But we're here. Um, this is my first live watching you. Hey, Zach Schmidt. Well, welcome, welcome to to the live. Uh, while we're waiting for Seagull, I don't want to jump into the bracket just yet. Give it a few minutes. Give some people. Um, some time to join. Um, if you get any questions for me or 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 anything? Uh, have you seen Tommy yet? I did see Tommy. I saw Tommy um, the second or third preview, and I loved it. It's such a weird little rock dance visual operetta. Um, I really, I really dug it. Um, I had a really good time. You know, it's it's. You know, it's a 70s <laughs> rock opera. You could just tell they were on acid for a lot of it. Let's just say that. So, but I, I had a really good time. I, I recommend Tommy. The choreography is astounding in Tommy. Lorraine Lotaro uh, kills it. Um, oh, am I not seeing your chat? Hi, Cinco. I'm sorry. No, I'm not seeing your chat. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on.
Oh, no. Hold on, Cinco. My bad, everybody. Let me get Cinco Paul in here. Have him join, and then we can <laughs> get the the madness started. Um, I'm so nervous, you guys. What's up with that? Um, hey, Scott. How, welcome. You're late. We haven't we haven't really started yet. There should be a Broadway calendar. There should be. I knew Playbill used to do calendars for a while. I don't know if they still make calendars. Playbill did. Um. People did calendars. What's my favorite MCU movie? Holy moly, that is a loaded question. All right, I think Cinco Paul's joining me. Um, favorite MCU movie? That's incredibly hard. And Winter Soldier is a big one. The first Cap, the whole Cap trilogy, honestly. Um, Infinity War, I think, is the best one. I don't know, all of them. Hey, Cinco Paul. Hi. I'm so sorry. I couldn't get to, I didn't know how to reach Wait, you. Wait, I can't hear you. Oh, you can't? Oh, let me. Oh, wait, hold on. Uh... Hold on. Can you hear I'm, me so now? I, I emailed you. Um, can you hear I me now? I may not open the right email. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. It's all good. Okay, good. Oh, um, maybe you had my old email. I changed it. Oh, maybe. But I, I almost I, sent I, it through Twitter, but oh well. Well, welcome. <laughs> we're live streaming right now to YouTube, so we're we're on. Yeah, I saw all the people. That's how I was listening. Oh, right. I was like, oh, wait. Oh, look. Oh, well, look we, anyway, I'm here now. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I'm late. Sorry about that, everybody. My bad. All my bad. Hi, Cinco. It has Hi, been Mark. A, a minute since we've talked. I wish it was slightly happier different uh, circumstances but here we are yeah yeah that was uh that was too bad do you want me to sort of i can i can tell you some stuff yeah tell me i'm the I mean, people are here they're they're listening and we're all ready to and do i'm not on, i'm not looking at the youtube thing so you can sort of pass on if people have questions but but basically i mean people have been asking what are the you know the likelihood of another streamer picking it up which is next to zero really just to be honest it just is not going to happen with our show unfortunately it's it's an expensive show plus also you know they would want to get the first two seasons from apple and i don't think apple would be willing to to let go of them so i don't think that's going to happen but I, I and broadway video are currently looking at other ways to maybe get the season out there so that everybody could experience it. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. Everybody send positive vibes and, and maybe there'll be an opportunity. Uh, we did do, I wanted to like tell everybody that that in order to like try to sway Apple, we did this big uh, hour long presentation of season three. And we had Cecily and Keegan and Kristen and Jane and Jaime and Ariana and Marty Short, who has a much bigger part in season three. And we had cool. them all there in person. In, they all came. It was like Avengers Assemble. And they all came. And it was just like beautiful. They like, you know, lots of laughs. This, they did an amazing job with the songs. Everybody was emotional at the end. And still, the numbers are the numbers, I guess. So the Apple, it did not sway uh, the Apple folks, but that we is... gave our best shot. Marty Short actually himself turned to me after like it was over and said like, how are they going to say no to this? There's no way they'll so say no to this, but they found a way. So there we are. That is devastating. And, and it was all written, all the songs, all the scripts. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all totally written. It's ready to go. But God, so that we'll is... See. And I don't want to talk about like what it was right because we we'll sort of see figure it. out like you know what we might be able to do with it but at some point i will i promise but you will all love it i <laughs> I, I promise wait. you you will you will like it a lot so we'll see I, we'll see what happens 
cannot wait. Well, I won't bug you too much yet for more information about season three that we will get to see. I'm I'm confident. There's no way that it won't happen in my brain in some form. <laughs> well, they'll happen in your brain. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... I'm already on season 12 in my brain. Right. I'm already, I've been watching for years. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we'll see, hopefully. I mean, who knows? There could be a Schmigadoon revival, a renaissance or something, and some some someone decides to say, oh, yeah, now maybe Apple would change his mind and say, like, okay, now maybe we should make a season three now that it's become a massive hit outside of Apple or something. Yeah, okay. so... So people stream it, stream it all you can, tweet, save, hashtag save Schmigadoon. Let those Apple people know they need to reverse the curse and give us season three. Yeah. Mm. Makes me, makes my blood boil. So what, what caused, what, what brought on this March Madness bracket idea? Um, I just saw some other people were doing them and I thought like, oh, maybe we, I should do one. So I'm always curious as to like which songs, you know, resonate with people and more than others. And so I, I thought, well, I'm just going to like, I'll just create my own. <laughs> and uh, as you know, like I feel nostalgic for the show. And so like, Ugh. like you pointed out like, oh, oh, you posted this, you posted that. Does that mean anything? It just means I'm like thinking about the show. And you know, I did. I, I was like trying to hold like national treasure your your yeah, tweets you said is... something real and then happy beginning does that I was like, so, yeah something real with the show that there's uh, a new just... happy beginning somewhere else <laughs> no <laughs> just like posting stuff but um yeah so that's why i thought oh this this might be fun and i'll see if you know anybody does it i didn't feel like didn't think as many people would would respond oh well because it's did. It's brilliant. It's so hard too. I mean, I sort of skimmed over it. I was like, okay, well, I would choose that one. Then there was like, oh, I, I can't choose those two. No, I can't between choose between those two. And then I got challenged to do it. So here we are. Yeah, that was a cop out. Oh, this is so hard. It, it was funny. So no, but it is. It's funny because I was initially, what a bunch of babies. Just it's not that hard to do it. And then as I was preparing my bracket for tonight, I was like, oh. I see what they're saying. It's really, yeah. There are some of there are some round one ones, like you literally have my two favorite songs in that in Act Two in season two, season two. Go head to head right away. Yeah, people were complaining about is that the talk to Daddy bells and whistles? No, I just no, did it's it. not even that one. Oh, it's not even that it's one. Hmm, I can't wait. Well, and... When we go through, oh. we'll find out what they are. No. But but yeah, I... I um I just did it based on like the first song was paired with the last song and then I sort of went in gotcha. from there. So it's sort of random, but, but it makes sense that often I think a lot of the stronger songs come around episode four, episode five, you know, sort of episode three, in the middle of the season, maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. People, I'm just checking out the chat. Some people are saying uh, a Kickstarter, they would definitely contribute to a Kickstarter. Yeah. To, to, but that's, that's amazing. I mean, maybe, because someone said something like, oh, like a, a cast recording, right? Like a Kickstarter could like maybe make something like that happen. Yeah. Or yeah, a live, a live one night only so, benefit, live like reading or table read or something. Yeah. I wanted to host a sing along for a while. Oh, at like yeah. A movie, at like a movie theater. I think like a. Yeah, like, I'd be all for that. I thought together. about like, yeah, like maybe let's rent a theater in New York City and just do a a marathon right yeah oh, alamo general. draft house rents out their theaters and just there we go and they released the sing-along versions at least of season one so if you edit those in all the words would appear on screen oh right and it would be perfect have to sort of edit yeah but i could talk like apple and i are still friendly so i could say like hey could we um produce sing-along versions of the episodes yes uh, that would be people would dress up we'd rocky horror it it'd be great uh, Let's do that. That makes me uh, so happy. Broadway Cares fundraiser, yeah. I'm sure lots of people. So well, yeah, tweet tweet uh, to Apple saying we want sing along versions everybody. <laughs> well, let me share my screen, I think. Oh, it's going to show us. I did it on, can you see? Oh yeah, there we go. Can I make us bigger? Or no. Oh, I can't make us any bigger. Sorry, everybody. 
<laughs> Everybody's like, no big loss. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Canva, for if you want to sponsor me for this video, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So we have Schmigadoon and How We Change. Mm. Now, my favorite version of Schmigadoon is the finale upbeat. I love that in in with how we change. So I was right. The, the God spelly version. Yeah. yeah. That was really a fun moment for me. I mean, obviously that wasn't planned until I, you know, started thinking about the, the finale and everything. And so it was fun discovering, oh, wait, I can just bring Schmigadoon back with a God spell beat and bass line. This bass line actually would work, you know, and so. It's brilliant. I love that reprise. I'm going to go with Schmigadoon. <gasps> You're going with Schmigadoon. Yeah, I know. I, I feel like I'm going to have some controversial ones in here. No, I, I went back and forth on that. I went for how we change because it contains both, but also because how we change was like a really, for me, it was like a hard one to write. Mm. It was 100% sincere, you know, no jokes in it. And it was a little Sondheim-y. And so my first foray into that. So because of that challenge, yeah, I went with How We Change. All of these. I These are all literally my favorite songs. I listen to both Stop. soundtracks. Stop. It's true. But also, you don't have to apologize for any of your choices tonight, Mark. I just okay. want to be clear, if, even if they're different from mine, that doesn't make mean they're wrong. Just means we'll that you have a different take. Yeah. Do you see my shirt? It's a new one. Yeah, nice. The welcome sign. Ryan James D. He's the best. He's uh, a, you know he's watching. Shout out to Ryan James D. Thank you, Ryan. This is another. This this one I feel like is really hard. You can't tame me and you make me want to sing. Because one, mean? you make me want to sing makes me tear up every time. And it's such a brilliant arc to to Josh. But you can't tame me. I feel like is is. I mean, God. I um, yeah. I mean, you you make me want to sing, is very impactful. Obviously, in the show, yes. right? For that reason. But I chose you can't tame me because I think that's ultimately. A I better. feel like I'm leaning towards. You can't tame me. Yeah. That's right. Did you make your decisions before or are you making them in the moment right now? No, I'm sort of making them. I looked, I mean, I definitely looked at this and thought about yeah. it, but I haven't like filled it out yet fully. That's good. Good for you. You're being so, spontaneous. Yeah, I'm trying to think if, there are any, if there are any, at some point, I wish we could release the, the longer version of You Can't Tame Me with Aaron's complete dance solo in there. Yes. We ended up having to trim that. I don't think we've ever been able to release that. But he worked so hard on that. And I felt so bad. But it was funny because, like, he didn't even, when he watched the first episode, he didn't even realize it. Like, that shows you what, like, what a good guy Aaron is that he's not self obsessed. Cause, like, there's a lot of actors who would say, like, what? My whole, my dance number was cut in half. Oh. You know? And he said he Erica, his girlfriend, said, like, oh wait, did they cut down your dance? So <laughs> he he's a dance, right? She's dance focused. So and 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 that's what let him know. But yeah, so, so we're on board. You can't tame me. Okay. Yeah. Now, corn pudding, and I always, always never get my man. This I know corn pudding has won a lot of people's brackets on Twitter, but yeah. I as much as I love corn pudding. I'm going with I always, always, never get my man. Ah, that's nice. Uh, it's one of my favorite. Oh, I can't spell. Um, it's one of my absolute favorite numbers. I love it's the the basis. Um, always true to you is one of my favorite show tunes. Ah, and I feel like Cole Porter himself would be like, "Good job, Cinco Paul. Ah, you nailed." I mean, Horny Bjorn loves servant <laughs> porn and. Taxi stocks late to, lead to sexy talks. I mean, that's just chef's uh, kiss. I will but say that I've we... always, I've always been curious if there were more verses because the the song, the original song, is like 
25 <laughs> courses or something. 25 yeah, verses. There were a couple. I mean, obviously they didn't make that cut because they weren't that great, but there was one <laughs> about um um a cook, like the cook who was cooking. I was trying to find it. Like when I found Texty socks and sexy talks, I was so happy. I was just like, <laughs> okay, this is worthy of Porter, that that little bit. Um yeah, there was one about a cook, and I wish I had my like scrawled notes because I was trying to like do something <laughs> with with different types of food and how they could, you know, the, the switching of the consonants. But I I was never able to find it in a in a way that that made me happy. So, oh man, but I I pers I chose corn pudding for this one because even though I think the difficulty level of always always never get my man is harder there was something there's just something magical about corn pudding somehow that like the fact that like so many people gravitate toward it's the first song i wrote i mean it's the very first song i wrote and uh, it was the one we sang when we pitched it so and it won it won the big award i mean and it won was... the emmy so that's cr i mean it is it is brilliant and it's it's so wholesome and like sort of absurd and then you get the sort of double entendre mixed in there it's it's it is pretty great yeah oh, lover spat and tribulation i mean it's hard to beat tribulation yeah lover spat's great i'm i i have to go with tribulation though yeah this to me this is one of the easier choices i actually yeah. It's interesting because I always like worried about Lover Spat. I felt like Lover Spat is like one of the weakest songs. And and I was and I did some work on it to to fix it, but it's sort of it is what it is. It fulfills its function. I think it's good enough. It was funny, like one of the like online publications ranked all the songs from season oh. one. And they put Lover Spat first. And I was like, what? What? But the, I mean So somebody really liked it, but I think that's an easy choice. Tribulation, for sure. Tribulation. Now, somewhere love is waiting for you, and suddenly. Suddenly is one of my favorites. I'm going to have to go with suddenly. Yeah, this was another relatively easy one. Although, you know, Alan does a great job. Alan with nails it. But suddenly, yeah, that's that's one of the stronger it's ones. In this. So beautiful. Best act one finale. Uh, I was going to share a little anecdote about that which is like the first table read we did we had uh laura benanti as emma and, and um and so this was like very you know I, this is sort of super early on and she, nobody knew what it was or anything and so i just personally brought her laura in and she came in and i taught her the songs and then i got to like laura benanti i think is the best I mean, mm -hmm. she's amazing. She's one of my all-time favorites. And so here I am in a room at, with Laura Benanti. I'm at the piano. And then I sang suddenly with her. Oh. And it was like a Broadway geek. I could I was like, what am I? I'm singing <laughs> suddenly with Laura Benanti. Like, what is happening to me? That's uh, amazing. That was such a, a, a cool e experience for me. But but um yeah, suddenly is one of those ones that sort of magically just sort of pops out almost fully made, you know? Mm. Sort of it's so beautiful. Around. It's so classic. And it's, and you know, and it, the whole, and then the production wise, the split screen effect was stunning. And the snow in July is just funny and <laughs> so great. And then the, the newspaper referencing the snow in July in right, the next yes. episode. Enjoy the ride and vagina. Well, I think I'm going to have to go with enjoy the ride. Um, <laughs> but I still, where my my oldest daughter, if we're in that, you know, oh, wait, she's watching. Never mind. Oh, there um, she is. Yeah, she's watching. My, yeah. Did she my learn? Daughter, <laughs> we, we stopped right before uh, episode four when we were watching it. I don't know why. Oh, Oh, interesting. but I think it's going to be time for her to watch episode four very, very soon. Yeah. And I think it'll be very yeah. helpful. Everyone has their time. This would be my pick as well. I chose Enjoy the Ride as as fun as the Do Re Mi parody is. Yes. Enjoy the Ride is just it's so it's so great. It's so great to see Cecily, you know, break free and have fun. Yeah. Have her, 
a lot of living to do moment where she, you know, yeah. she was so nervous about that just because, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm opposite an actual Broadway star as I'm doing this song. Like what, what am I doing here? But I said, that's Melissa. Melissa's just having, you're doing it as Melissa. She's not a pro, you know, so. Right, exactly. Just have fun. And she did. Yeah, that's why Cecily, I know I've, I've mentioned this before, maybe even to you, that Cecily and Keegan being from the the sort of improv sketch world, coming into this Broadway world full of Broadway people, it's just such a perfect dynamic that it's, you know, they're able to go with the flow at the same time being from yes. a, a different world. And they both love musicals, you know, and and know them very well. So, I'm telling you, Schmigadoon live on Broadway, it should happen. <laughs> you done tamed me, and with all of your heart. To me, this is an easy one. I mean, we've yeah. already given it to you. You can't tame me, and with all of your heart is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, that was my choice too. And uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I'm already, I think I've talked about this already that like I woke up in the middle of the night with that with with all of your heart just came to you in the, from a dream. Yeah, I woke up and I think I was thinking of this song or like what what to do with this song. And I woke up with that melody. It was like two or three a.m. And I said to my wife, I said, I am so sorry, but I have to go down to the piano right now and record this so I don't forget it. And so so that one's also a little magical. Right? That's amazing. That whole yeah, that whole song is perfect. And did did the joke about them laughing at the end, even though nothing funny was said, was that added like day of, or did you think of that beforehand? No, that has that was almost always in the script because that's always wow. something that bothered me. That like they end so many of those, you know, forties and fifties musicals, they end the the number with <laughs> cracking up. It's like end. little applause breaks. Yeah. Why are they la Are they? La did they know they were? Saying? I don't know. I don't want to get into that question. It's to let yeah. the audience clap. It's you know. Right. Exactly. Know. Yeah. <laughs> you need a little moment. Yeah. yeah. So funny. And the final one for this one, he's a queer one. That man, oh mine, and cross that bridge. Mm. Anne is so good and he's a queer one and it's so mm. sweet and funny, but I, I'm a, I'm a, a group number guy. So I got to go with cross that bridge. I got to go with cross that bridge. Me too. That's what I went with. I just like, I mean, that was a way to pay homage to my favorite type of songs in these, you know, brotherhood of man and sit down, you rock in the boat. And so good. like, uh, put him back. Right. From yep. Yep. Uncle Labner. It's just, I I just love that type of song so much. So I was so happy when I thought, oh, that's where this can go. That's where that type of song can go. Yeah. And that the woman, I forget her name now, who is sort of the, the lead matronly woman in that group. And she was right. dubbed by Elise, right? Um, Willis. Yeah, it's Elise Willis. Yeah. Chris Willis, who did the underscore, you know. Yeah. Did the non-singing score. And yeah, and that actually... This, that part wasn't original. The counterpoint wasn't in the song originally. And at some point, I think I just emailed Doug Besterman and David Chase and said, like, I feel like, do you feel like we should have a counterpoint in there? And they <laughs> said, yes. And so brilliant. All right. Are we finishing off the left side and then going to the right side? Is that the way? How, how, I don't know. How do you, how do you want to do it? That makes sense. Sure. Finishing off the left. Okay. Yeah. Schmigadoon and You Can't Tame Me. Mm. I think I got to go with You Can't Tame Me. Oh, nice. Yeah. I went with How We Change. So I've got How We Change there. And then I guess we go down to Always, Always and Tribulation. Yeah, the two songs from episode five. Ooh, you're right. I'm going with I Always, Always. Wow, look at I you. Know, I know, I really love that the... song. That's that's so nice to hear. That one was written because we didn't know that we were going to get Jane. We were thinking the Countess might be a non-singing part. Mm. And then we cast Jane and she was we didn't think she was going to be available. And then she was, you know, she was able to show up for like one day. Right. <laughs> or two right. days. And so so, well, now it's Jane. I have to give her a song. So and it's it's one of my, it's one I listen to. 
most often, I think. Yeah. I did my my battles between corn pudding and uh and you make me want to sing. And tribulation. Oh, and tribulation. Oh, right, right, right. So so right, so now I guess I'm corn pudding moves forward, yeah. Corn pudding beats tribulation. Yeah, for me. Yeah. Suddenly and enjoy the ride. That's a hard one. I tend to go for the more fun numbers. I'm a more fun mm -hmm. number guy, but suddenly, I think I'm going to go with suddenly. I think I'm going to go with suddenly. I went with suddenly too. It is just, it's the perfect tone. Yeah. Yeah. And they sang it so beautifully. I mean, they really did. Yeah. And it's so cool to have a duet. Where the people aren't singing to each other. Aren't singing to each other, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, with all of I your... don't know if there are a lot of those in maybe someone in the notes knows. Yeah, I'll have to think about that. I don't that. think they're that is that the I'm sure it can't be the first occurrence, but but um certainly not common. They're, not, they're singing to other people, not each other. Yeah. Huh. That's hmm. fun. I'll have yeah. to look that up. This is the hardest. This is the hardest choice on this side, I think. With all of your heart and cross that bridge. Yeah. I I'm going with with all of your heart. Mm. I went with cross that bridge. Did you? I think I've I think it's hard. Well, it's hard. Like, can you separate them from the performance too? That's hard. That's that's another you know, I do these Twitter polls. I think you you've commented on them. Um before that oh, right. I do the songs you're finding like the best female solo right yeah, yeah and then we're going to do the males and then we'll do act one finales we'll do all sorts of songs but yeah it's it's hard my intention for the song the female solos is to not have it be linked to a performer necessarily but sometimes it's very hard to how do you yeah. how do you think about people without hearing barbara streisand you know it's, yeah i uh, enjoy watching with all of your heart more than i enjoy watching cross the, that bridge with all of your heart is maybe my favorite musical number in season one, but I think cross that bridge is maybe a more clever, funnier song with all of your heart is just sweet and nice, you know? So I would go with cross that bridge. I feel that. I feel that <laughs> now you're having me doubt all my decisions. Don't Mark. Don't. No, I, I mean, it's just cause I'm, I'm always going back and forth. I mean, all these I know I went so back great. and forth on this one. That's a tough one. Okay. You can't do. I'm I'm gonna go with I always always. Oh, look at how deep uh, it's in the semifinals. The I final love it. Four always always. Uh, corn pudding for me in that slot. I just rode corn pudding. I like for a long time I was a little anti it just because I thought no, there's so many better songs, but I think there's something magical about it so it's such a great gateway song into the show yeah. yeah because you know it is absurd it's also absurd that they're singing about a real nice clam bake in <laughs> many ways you know it's so yeah suddenly with all your heart Ooh. i'm going with all of your heart yeah i think that's the right choice I had already eliminated it, sadly. So, but I went with cross that bridge. So my final two are corn put in and cross that bridge. Ooh, what wins, Mark? Wow. Well, now you have me because I'm now I'm thinking with all of your heart. I mean, I love the the production number so much, and I'm thinking, is it just? Now I'm doubting. Is I mean, the song is still obviously amazing, but am I? Mm. Am I factoring the the production of it too much? not for me to say i'm gonna go with with all of your heart yeah i think that's right mine is uh cross that bridge so cross that bridge takes out corn pudding that's my yeah so that's my number one wow at this point in my life for, <laughs> right for season one we'll do this every year it'll be different every every time yeah. i'm sure people will tune in for this <laughs> now we're gonna do it this year
<laughs> yeah, oh, <right. laughs> please. Okay. Oh my goodness. Well, by that time, our our efforts will have worked, and we'll be on season five. And right, all right, yeah. You'll be in you'll be in future shows now. You're parodying shows that haven't even been written. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only place to go. Oh, okay. All right. Do here we go. shock you and happy beginning. See now, I think happy beginning and songs like happy beginning are beautiful, but I do have trouble with more melancholy songs. Hmm. They're usually not my favorite songs although happy beginning is beautiful i actually have it on my it's kids. uplifting it's not melancholy isn't it i mean you know you talk about how the, the world is terrible but maybe tomorrow it'll be good right it's acknowledging the sadness and tragedy in life but saying that's no reason to give up hope that's true that's true anyway I don't and want to do sway shock? your decision. No, here. I mean, between the two, I got to go with Happy Beginning. Yeah. Me too. I went with that. And it was so much fun to, to I've been playing ukulele since I was in high school. And I did ukulele recitals in college. And so it was like really fun for me to, to finally get a, a ukulele forward song in the show. Yeah. Would they call you the ukulele? You had a the nickname. Duke of, the Duke of the Uke. <laughs> The Duke of the Uke. That's I don't right. know if anyone called me that. I called <laughs> myself that. And I, in I'll hopes call you that. That, that. that would stick. But yeah, the <laughs> fact that I guess you're calling me that. All these, but it go. was probably a nod to Kermit and his banjo, right? And so it's like, of course. we'll have a ukulele instead of a banjo. Yeah. <laughs> okay, kaput, and there's always a twist. This is a hard one because my two of my favorite people in the world sing There's Always a Twist. Right. But Kaput, I got to go with Kaput. Yeah, I, I initially put There's Always a Twist because I think I had more fun writing that one, maybe. And I think it was more of a challenge to write. But ultimately, I think like Kaput is, is a pretty strong song. It's... yeah. I think it's a stronger song. It's like people. It, people it nails like, it. Yeah. And Dove did like a crazy good job with it. And Kaput, I think, was the first song I wrote. It's like corn pudding again. It was in some ways, not because it's Kaput, corn pudding, um, that, um, that, yeah, I think it was the first song. So there's something magical about that first attempt, right? Amazing. And it's so it's it's deceptive because you think, oh my God, that's literally just mine hair. But it's it's really not. If you look at it, it's yeah. really not, which I think is a, a magic trick on your part. Ah. Uh, that was always the goal. It was fun. Like every once in a while I would see someone say, basically, what, you're just changing a couple notes and a couple words, and it's like Oh. No, that's, that's not what, what makes it, it is. So brilliant. The fact that you think it is means like that I and Doug and David all did our jobs right. <laughs> Absolutely. And then Doorway to Wear and Over and Done. My wife chose Doorway to Wear. To wow. me, this is one of the easiest ones and it's Over and Done. Yeah. I think Doorway to Wear is, is a pretty solid parody of Corner of the Sky, but Over and Done is like in a different league. Yeah, it's just next next level and then i need to eat and famous as hell now famous as hell is oh i see i thought over and done and famous and as hell were in the same one and that killed me no famous as hell is one of my oh. favorite songs in season two so i gotta go with that yeah i chose famous as hell as well i need to eat was my lover's spat in this season which i thought the whole time i was thinking is this good enough I don't know if this is gonna, you know, and 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 I sort of played around with it a bit, but then the day we shot, like Anne came in, Anne Harada came in, and she said, "I I've been waiting the whole shoot for this song. This is my favorite song in the show. I love it so much." And so then I thought, okay, it, I mean, it's this is okay. Yeah. Last night my dinner was a candle. I, I mean, that's probably one of the best lines in musical theater. 
comedy history. It's I on mean, his shirt. I mean, people. It is. I almost. Shirt. I almost wore that shirt too. I was like, no, this is the new one. I got to show off the new merch. Yeah, but famous as hell is like something completely it's so exciting, different. and Titus. I mean, just wailing and the. Uh, he was Joanne so good in, in that. It. Yeah, in the in the recording session. Although you know he sang quite a bit of it live where, when we could, but in the first recording session, you know I had kind of wanted him going higher earlier and more intense. He said like, no, no, no. <laughs> Let's. He he had it all mapped out in his head like when to go high, you know. And so initially I was like, well, Titus, I was thinking he said like, trust me, trust me, you're going to want to hold it back, and then you know. And he was so he was so right, you know, so right. just need to trust like that's a big lesson I learned in these two seasons is like, I'm not always right. And like, trust the instincts of these gene just people that you've hired, you know, to make yeah. choices. So that's my little famous as hell tidbit. There you go. I've been working on a video. Spoiler alert for anyone. I've been working on a making the the making of singing in the rain can be a big Ooh. video because there's really no like not that i'm making a documentary but like there's no documentaries about it uh visually and so learning even more about arthur freed and how his really his talent was just finding the right people and trusting them to do i can't do wait they're gonna do video. that's my mm -hmm. favorite that's my favorite movie musical of all time and maybe it's literally the best yeah it's the best movie musical and I'm, it's so fascinating how it all came to be yeah, maybe. And I think it's probably my top three movies of all time. It's so good. Oh, yeah. 100%. Gene Hagen. Oh, uh, yeah. I could talk about singing in the rain forever. That was one of the few musicals I saw as a kid because my family wasn't theater at all. They weren't musical people. Ah. That's one of the few. That and Little Shop of Horrors are like the two I used to, I, I knew as a kid because my father liked them. Yeah, I remember seeing it. I pro probably like seven or eight seen Make Him Laugh, Donald O'Connor do that. I thought that was the greatest thing. I'd ever seen in my in my life. I and, just like, and it is. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. You know, um song uh stealing aside. <laughs> right, yes. Cole Porter. So funny. I don't know if he was peeved about that or not. Yeah. No, no, he actually uh Cole, he was he was fine with it. He sort of okay. it was a it was a, he yeah, he was like a yeah, he was fine with it. Okay. Let's see. Busting on, out. We digressed. We digress. But yeah, right. <laughs> Busting out, and maybe it's my turn now. This is a diff. I, I'm leaning towards busting out. Hmm. I feel like it's it's one I listen to a lot. And I think it's deceptively simple. Maybe it's my turn now is such a great solo, though. No, I'm just gonna go with busting out. Do it. I went with maybe it's my turn now, but no judgment for that. I see the fun, like busting out is so much fun. I can share a little tidbit. Well, it's like that was Cecily was so nervous about that because she's like, I'm going to be, I'm going to have Dove Cameron on one side of me and Ariana DeBose on the and other. Chained. <laughs> yeah. She was like, what? But actually, it was like the most fun day she had in the whole shoot. I think just doing that, she just sort of had a blast. But I think, yeah, maybe it's my turn now. That's that's a special one for me because it was also like Cecily, you know, giving her a song so that she could really have her turn, you know. Yeah, and uh, she killed it. And I feel like that one is going to have a a big life outside of the show too. I think a lot of. Oh, people yeah, really identify with that like, number audition with that yeah yeah you can get the official schmigadoon songbook <laughs> not the official schmigadoon song ah. um everyone's gotta get naked and good enough to eat i mean i feel like it's gotta be good enough to eat yeah but yeah I think it's I get naked is fun, but good enough to eat to me is a is is it a another level? I guess. Yeah, yeah. So that good. So Those two fun. together. That one, was, that one was super. That was maybe the most fun I had <laughs> writing a song that season. Just coming up with all the names and all you know. <laughs> all oh God, Patty and Chuck. <laughs> 
so good. I just, I'll always remember my wife and I turning to each other at the exact same moment, both like, they're not, they're not going to do what I think they're going to do. Right. And then it's like, Oh no, they really are. <laughs> oh God. Worst brats in town and something real. Mm -hmm. I what do you think Mark. I think I'm gonna go with something real. Ah, it's the romantic in you. It is, and it's it's. I don't know. It it's it's sort of being so original. As well, I mean, it it definitely had shades of other of love song and other, but I feel like it really, I don't know. There's something meta mm -hmm. about it being something real and like almost breaking through the fallacy of Schmigadoon. Like I thought about, I wonder if season three, like those two, will leave Schmigadoon and go off on life on their own. Hmm. They find something real anyway, but right, something real, yeah. The worst, yeah. I mean, worst Brad's in town. You you do an eight, you do an eight rhyme stanza too. <laughs> so eight, I mean, an octorhyme, as we <laughs> octorhyme. in the biz call it. Um, yeah, I chose worst Brats. Although you know, obviously, I have a very soft spot for something real and and um, but yeah. Worst also, Brats. I just realized I am not able to see the comments. So apologies if you guys are writing things oh, in the comments. So you can't, can't see comments right now. No, because right. I'm I'm sharing my screen, so I can't look at the comments. Sorry, everybody. I'll go. So I'll scroll. Maybe you know after at the end after yeah. we finish, I'll scroll through and look. I'm at some looking questions. at them now. They're great. Oh, they're amazing comments. Just wait till you see these, Mark. Oh no, everyone's mad at me. <laughs> no, they're no one's expressing rage. <laughs> they're just they're just commenting on the songs and stuff and so. And it's also, I mean, like besides yourself, I mean, with with my and rewatches and then like the editing process i've seen probably these episodes and these songs right so many times and so i'm sure like sometimes these songs have attached themselves to like maybe i was having a really good day that day or mm. something i'm sure there's otherworldly influences some some just stick out to me more yeah but and then the most yeah the most cruel bracket of all bells and whistles and talk to daddy that's a that's mean, sir. And that's interesting because, like, I think "Bells and Whistles" is a good song. I just don't think it's a you know. That's another one that's really tied to the song, But it's Jane's performance, I think. Like, and what we decided to do with that number elevated the song. Maybe. I think you're right. plus. I mean, I think I would go with her? "Talk to Daddy," either way. But yeah, I yeah, mean, I went with "Talk to Daddy." I like Bells and Whistles. It's fun. I especially liked the getting married today, like little section in there. I feel like that was what was really throwing me to Bells and Whistles. But Talk to Daddy is. Yeah. Is. What did you end up submitting for the Emmys? Submitted Talk to Daddy. You did submit Talk to Daddy. And that maybe we made one. a mistake. It was like hard. Like, I don't know what, you know. Looking yeah. back, like, should we have submitted something else? It was tough. One of the things that I think worked against us, which was Talk to Daddy was not a song that Apple put on YouTube when that episode came out. They did good enough Ooh. to eat instead. And so it just maybe didn't get the exposure. But Kaput was also uh, one we were considering because that got the most listens on Spotify. But we couldn't put a video up of it because of Dove's like recording contract. Like that's why no videos of Dove singing are allowed officially on YouTube. Um, I don't know what would would you have what would you have recommended, Mark? I might have done over and done. I mean, that was initially what I thought was going to be the one, but it just sort of didn't take off the way. I, I wonder maybe if it's because it would. it's. The most, I don't know, unschmigadoon like maybe? Right. I mean, that's why ultimately we decided not to go with it, though, you know, because I felt like, oh, maybe we'll have better luck with something that's, that's more schmigadoony. But yeah. Who all knows? Them. Fools, but... all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd at least get a nomination, but it didn't happen. All right. Happy, Happy beginning, beginning kaput. and kaput.
I'm going to go with Kaput. Look at you. I went with Happy Beginning. I knew you were going to go with Happy Beginning. Yeah, you know That's me. a hard one. Yeah. It's a hard one. This one's not hard. Next one. This one to me is the most hard. Really? Huh? Over and Done and, and Famous as Hell are... Maybe your two favorites. So high up in that season for me. I'm yeah. going to go with Over and Done at the end of the day. Yeah, me too. But that's a hard one for me. Yeah. Busting Out and Good Enough, good enough to Eat has got to be the winner there. Yeah, that was my winner. Are we going to line up perfectly? Oh my goodness. That would be crazy. Something real and talk to daddy. I got to go with talk to daddy. Yeah. Our final four on this side are the same. Whoa. 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 So put it over and done. I'm going with over and oh, done. Oh, wait. They're not the same because I chose happy beginning. Never mind. Oh, right. <laughs> over and done. Yes. Kaput. Yes. Yes. And good enough and talk to daddy. They're in the same episode. They are. That's so wild that that keeps happening. You yeah. know, just based on what type of music I like more, I'm going to go with Talk to Daddy. Yeah. that's. I, oh, I went with Good Enough to Eat. Because it, it was just so much fun to write. And it's so, it's different. It's it's many, it's a little priest, but then it's also, your you know, Annie. And so it's yeah. just like a mix of things. It is interesting that like this bottom it's all the songs from the fourth episodes like broke through. There is something magical and it happened again with season three. I can say that as much that I think like once again, like some of the very best songs landed in that, in that episode. It's yeah, just sort of more, it's, it's the, it's the, the act rhythm. One finale episode. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so what's going to win between over and done and talk to daddy, Mark. Golly. I think over and done. I chose over and done over good enough to eat. Wow. So the two finalists. Are the Ariana DeBose numbers. They are. Wow. We love Ariana. What are you going to choose? I'm going to go with. Over and, and done. done. Over and done. That was my it. choice too. I feel like, and forgive me, like stop me if I've told this story before though, but like season two was a really hard shoot, you know? And, and I think I've talked about like, I, I and the writer's room, but I really take the blame, like wrote too big of a season, you know, like <laughs> look at all this. Like there's, I had to leave like a bunch of songs off of this side, at least welcome to Chicago and, some other things off of this side because I wrote too many songs. So it was really intense, like trying to like fit everything in every day. And so like by the end of the shoot, like everybody's just exhausted, you know? And just like, not that like tensions weren't flaring or anything, but everybody was just tired, you know? I feel like, in, and a lot of times we were shooting six days a week, you know, to try to, to make our schedule. And so, but then Ariana comes in and she sang over and done live. And it was like magic. Mm. We had like, two weeks left of the shoot. And it just was like everybody had been renewed or replenished. It was amazing to see. And just everybody and people are in tears. And and so many people after she sang that song came up to me and gave me a hug or a handshake and said, like, this is why we're doing it. Thank you for reminding me, like, why we're doing this. And and um it was like, so So for me, that song, there's something like powerful that's like beyond me and beyond Ariana. It's just sort of like, it just was magical on the set. Like it just transformed everybody. And I remember watching like Cecily and Keegan watching it. They're both in tears, you know? So it was, it was pretty magical. That's so it's, that's my winner too. Over wow. Well, I'm glad we lined up there. We did. We did. That's amazing. Yeah. And, I love how when when Titus walks in silently to to turn on the lights and he gives a look to a camera that even but the first time I watched it, I felt like was him like not in character, like just Titus Burgess saying like, you guys <laughs> are wait. not about to believe what you're about to see. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, 
Wow. I'm surprised. Well, am I surprised? I've always said Over and Done, I think, is one of the best songs. But yeah. Okay. There we go. We did it, Mark. We Woo! did it. I was so nervous. <laughs> well, you did a great job. Thank and you. Now you can look at all the YouTube. Yeah, all the mean comments. Here, let me see what they said. I love over and done. Boom, done. <laughs> oh, man. See, Apple just needs to look at these comments. These people love this. Oh, Ryan said I'll be next time. You'll be my chat monitor. That's a great idea. I, I will take you up is. on that. That's someone who will like monitor the chat and like let me know. Oh, right. Like, you know, that's your daughter's of... job. Why? She like really. She <laughs> she's nine. She would. I think she. Would, I don't think she's read fast enough for the. Oh, okay. Yeah, Two Birds with One Stone was not on the bracket. Right, or Welcome to Chicago, because there were too many songs. So I made some choices where some people saying, like, I would have chosen Two Birds with One Stone as the best song. <laughs> that would surprise me. But Yeah, a lot of people are agreeing. Some people are saying they did not see that coming. Mm. My final two were, this is from Ryan. My final two were Corn Pudding and Over and Done, and he gave it to Corn Pudding. Wow, Corn Pudding, yeah. There's a power in the pudding. My daughter says, good job, daddy. Thank you, sweetheart. Go Aww. to bed now, please. Go to um, bed. Actually, it's a stay up night. So, you know, yeah, what I do? there's no school. <laughs> it's Easter tomorrow. It is Easter tomorrow, which is crazy. Way, yeah, I got to gotta hide some Easter eggs. Um, I don't know how much longer you want to do this, but I can answer questions if people have questions. Or I'm I'm here until until you tell me to end this, sir. Well, you know, all the time in the world. you always want to leave them wanting more. There's true, but um, but if there if people have certain questions, there was one thing I was going to talk about. I can't remember what it was. I'll I think I'll remember. So in a question I think I've asked you before, is there anything else that the fans can do to try to help besides social media and just streaming the show? Is there anything else that I, I'm not thinking of the fans no, can no, do? No, 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 no. I all think... want to do something. Yeah, I know. I just, just, you've done so much, you know? And so I'm just happy with all the support for the show and that you watched it and you love it. And like, so I'm, nobody needs to do anything more, but... If we move forward with some schmigadoon adjacent things or thing, you know, as we're trying to get things going, obviously would appreciate your support for that. Yeah. Well, you have a whole army behind you. Yeah. So I know, and we had talked about I had pitched a Halloween special, and you had mentioned before there might be that you had thought about a Christmas special in the past. Yeah, originally, I mean, because the ironically, but I think I've already talked about this, so I don't want to say it again. But yeah, ironically, I thought, oh, these two seasons are great companion piece. This is enough. Maybe I'll maybe we'll do a Christmas special. And then Apple said, No, we want it season three and a Christmas special. But then it was like too much to do both. So I said, oh, let's just do, but I didn't really, but it wasn't until I figured out what it was going to be. And I got really, really excited about it. that I said, okay, here we go. Yes, let's do it. And then. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, those, I mean, it must've been, well, we don't have to get into it, but I was going to say, it must've been the strike must've had. I think so. Uh, there was a, lo a lot of the streamers, a lot, you know, it's not, I'm certainly, our show isn't the only show it happened to. I'm not the only person this happened to. You know, there, there are a lot of other showrunners and writers I know that have gone through the same thing. It's a contraction that was happening anyway, because I think they just like overdid it. Mm -hmm. Thank heavens they did, because that's why we have Schmickatoon, you know, in the first place. But that contraction was already happening. I think the strike got them feeling even more vindictive <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> And so, um, yeah. Yeah, so was... it says, Ryan says, give us the Schmigmas special. Yeah. Schmigmas, yes. Well, let's see, some questions. Um, were there any songs that were cut from either season you'd like to see resurface someday? Yeah, I'd love to, like, if we did, like, uh, 
a 54 below. I know someone, someone else just sort of did one. That's what you and I hung out at that one. Yeah, um, but there's a, like, there's that we neck in the basement song, right, which, right. Was, which was a Nancy and Freddie from season one song. Because <laughs> originally Melissa became a, you know, went to a convent to, to hide out sort of, thought she was a nun, you know, sort of acted like she was a nun. And then she found Nancy pregnant in the basement. And that's where that came from. And so they had a song, it was a riff on We Kiss in the Shadows called We Neck in the Basement that um, that I actually like really like kind of like that song. And so that one, and then there was, Betsy had a song called Not That Kind of Gal that ultimately went away and the reprise of dad gave her enjoy the ride reprise yeah, that was part of the the having to combine you know turn eight episodes into six and so like what's the most economical way we can you know cover this and so those are the two there wasn't really <sighs> there wasn't anything like worthy there was a song i wrote in season two um called elsie is waiting for me <laughs> Oh no. Did I ever mention this? No. I haven't heard this. And so it's it's it was basically a version of there's got to be something better than <laughs> yes. this from Sweet Charity. It was like Josh is in prison for killing Elsie, but all of the prisoners are can't wait to get out of prison because their girlfriend Elsie is waiting for them. <laughs> and so it was this song like Elsie's waiting for me. You know, they're just like singing about how they're so excited. And then obviously that you know, that's the pressures on Josh because he's accused of killing, you know, their supposed girlfriend. So, but I I don't know if I ever, maybe I finished that one. And then there's just like earlier versions of songs that I tossed out. I'm trying to think if there's there's the, the dance, the dream ballet. That never even got written. It got written. Oh, never, the music stage, never even got but written. There was never any music for that. But there was like the, the first version in the longer version of season one, Melissa went to work as, you know, as a nun, she was hired to be a nanny or like a captain, but instead of kids, it was all, it was his aging parents, like two sets of age. So it was just, he was, she was taking care of old people. That's, that's so funny. the do re mi parody was like, don't be dead or uh, don't <laughs> like die before you're dead. <laughs> raise something like that. And it just was talking about don't be dead before That's you die funny. or something like that. And um, <laughs> so that one got written and there was a song, there's a song called It's August. Have I talked to, I can't remember if I talked about this. Where they just know. That, that started before the picnic basket auction. So it's like in season one. So everyone's going, oh, it's August, the greatest month of the year. And then they just went, it's August, it's August, it's August, it's August. <laughs> Ad nauseum. So it would be fun to like have those, like have a night where we could sort of yeah. sing some of the, you know, the the favorite songs, but then also dust off some of those unused ones. That well, was maybe a at our, answer our... for that one question. Sorry about that. Don't be sorry. This is the stuff we live for. Yeah. Um, let's see. I know there was other... <laughs> oh, David Chase is watching. Hi, David. Oh, David Chase. Oh, yeah. Be, he just he said being alone. Thank you for reminding. So there was being a, alone. that was another song for Krat. Is that the one he, he was going to start when he got killed? No, it was, remember when he's about to sing a song and Melissa cuts him off? That's what I meant. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so there was a song called Being Alone which was like being alive, just about like he didn't want to be, you know, he was tired of being alone, so he wanted to have a wife. Um, and we, and that one was written, but ultimately it's like, oh, it's funny for him to cut, it, to cut someone off again, have that be Melissa's thing. So funny. She has the power to do that. I still want my Schmigadoon rule book, The Rules of the Universe. Oh, yeah. Good, yeah. good luck. I'll I'll make you do it one day. 
Yeah, as well, a lot of people most... are asking about season three plot points or, you know, where it might have been set, but we're going to wait on that. Well, I will say that in season three, there is sort of an answer to a lot of people's in there. If you look closely, there is an answer into like, what is Schmigadoon? Where did it come from? What's it all about? So I was going to kind of answer that. Not, I didn't want to do it directly, but it's, it's there. I have an idea in my head what the, it is. So. If only there was someone, some random fan to break down those episodes and figure that out. <laughs> if only the episodes exist. Oh man, they will someday. Uh, are there any dream actors you wish could have been cast in the series? For sure. I had wanted, you know, Mandy Patinkin. There was a part for him in season three. Bernadette Peters. Love. Laura Benanti. Um, I mean, who... Who else like those are the big the biggest ones for me but i will say like we had some really cool people like broadway people do table reads and stuff for us along the way like steven pasquale was like great jesse Bonnie milligan Mueller, right yeah jesse mueller who i love she came in and and did a table read for us. And so we had some like really cool people that I was excited about. And then we also had Jane Krakowski from day one, which was amazing. amazing. Yeah. Mark, do you, if you could, if you could have one person in, in season three of Schmigadoon, who would you want? I think I said, I think I said on Twitter, I want Bonnie Milligan. Cause I know she's was involved in early yeah Early no season. she would totally there's a I wrote part for her in in season three so there you go and who else did I, oh andrea martin i think would be great ah. yeah, yeah. i love her and she's also connected to julie because she did she was on difficult people that's right and connected that's to right. marty of course from of way course. back oh yeah god spell 72 you know they're making a documentary about that Have you oh they are this? Yeah, they're making a documentary about that Canadian Godspell yeah. that had like every great comedian in it. Yeah. And Paul Schaefer playing keys. So crazy. Let's see if there's any other people are any other any crazy costume ideas for any seasons that didn't go through. I don't know if we had crazy Costume ideas. I mean, we basically did almost everything we wanted. I know. I know we went through several gowns, finding the right countess gown in season one, right? To like find the, the perfect one. But I don't think so. We did have, I mean, here's a makeup thing for Aaron. He had a little more, right? All he had were the little flashes by the side of his eyes. Aaron is Topher. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I wanted more. Like, <laughs> because Victor Garber is Jesus, has more, right? Oh, yeah. I had something on his forehead, and it was like, Apple was like, ah. <laughs> it's getting... disturbing. It reminds us, like, the Manson family or something. They were, like, oh, God. Really, <laughs> they were really bothered by us, so... So that was a compromise. His makeup was originally <laughs> a little crazier. It was going to be maybe a little too distracting, I guess. They were like, how dare you put a, a crazy little drawing on that beautiful face? <laughs> I mean, you know. I was like, okay, you, you got, you got. <laughs> um, what do you think the hardest song to sing from the show is? Oh, I mean, probably Tribulation, right? Tribulation. Yeah. Especially because she had to do it all in one shot. One take. One take. Yeah, that's a hard one. I mean, I know Over and Done is demanding. And and and, and I sort of weighed in on this with the whole uh, Wicked debate about like, oh, Ariana and Cynthia are like see, singing live. Oh, no, that's a horrible decision. And people right. were like, and saying like, how do you take care of their voices? And it's like, 
well, you you just take care of their voices. And it's not like like on a film set, it's it's, you know, you're doing multiple takes, but there's a lot of time in between. But I remember that day I said to everybody, but specifically the DP, I said, just so you know, Ari can sing this two, maybe three times max, you know. So so let's strategize. And so we're, really, we just said for the close-ups, she's going to sing it live for the close-ups. And then when we're further back, we'll use that live recording. But that one is, that one's very demanding. Famous as hell, obviously, is is super mm -hmm. demanding, but like nothing's demanding for Titus. <laughs> it's like range is so crazy. So it is. for anybody else to sing, Famous as hell would be a nightmare, I think. Yeah. I think you're right. How long did it take to film the bigger production numbers and what was the most difficult? I mean, probably good enough to eat. Good enough to eat took like, we'd originally budgeted like two days for that, three days, right? That was like insane. There was like, that was never going to happen. Plus it involves kids, you know, yeah, and they have right. a very limited time. Like right? you have them for like a couple hours and then they have to go to study and, you know, they have like mandated study and school and breaks and stuff. And so that one like took the longest time. Like we kept on having to like carve out time later, like so we can go back and we can finish good enough to eat. Like we yeah. have to finish this, this number, you know? And so, and it's a long song too, right? Cause it has the first part in the right. popular, and then we go into the to the so dining that was, hall that was definitely the hardest that took ultimately probably five days Oof. shoot i mean not five complete days because we were like right. stealing stuff here and there but yeah i know welcome to chicago was filmed like at two three in the morning and it was freezing and everyone was in these skimpy outfits well we did it you know <laughs> in vancouver in the summer you have like five hours of dark <laughs> and so and and that's one thing i had to do when i realized when i was faced with the reality of that it's like i'd written so much so much at more at night than was at night ultimately it ended up being just because it's like hey we're in chicago right it's, yeah this is, it's always night. is a daytime place <laughs> this is a nighttime place but but ultimately it's just like we don't have enough nighttime so yeah, so that was I felt sorry for the dancers. They are all amazing though, but you know we would quickly put coats on all, wrap them all as soon as we finished a take. Um, but yeah, that was it was pretty. It was summer, but it was cold in Vancouver at night. Yeah. Let's see. Cinco tweeted once about the writing process for Sour Macaroon. Can you tell that here in detail, please? Love that part. I mean, I think I think one. Th I mean, that was just early on. I, I'm such a huge Jesus Christ superstar buff. Uh, as a teenager, I listened to that album so much. So I knew, and it always like a jaded Mandarin. A jaded, it was like, it never made it sense to me. Certainly, I know what it means now, but as a, all I knew were Mandarin oranges as like a 16 year old. So I'm like, what is, <laughs> what is he talking about? And also, you know, it's, it is good to use words that your audience is familiar with in lyrics. Um, but anyway, so I thought like, oh, I got to play with that. What should that be? Mandarin macaroon, right? To, to harken back to season one and then a sour macaroon, right? Because it says the air is as sweet as a macaroon. So right. sour macaroon. And so I pitched that to the writer's room the next day. And then I said, yeah, sour, dour, dour, sour, sour macaroon. And then Julie Clauser said, no, it should be sour, dour, almond flour. Sour <laughs> macaroon. I said, like, almond flour? She said, yeah, macaroons are made out of almond flour. Now, I don't know if that actually is true. So macaroon, I think, is made with almond flour. And macaron is different. Ah, right. So, so she was right. Yeah, I think she was right. A sour macaroon, yeah, almond flour. So anyway, but I thought like, oh, genius, yeah. That's a, I mean, okay. Julie, like I have to give her credit for like so many, like song tie. You know, she'll pitch out a song title. She pitched out a couple in season three that were just like killer and were so helpful. But she's the one who said like, you need to just write a really good song for Ariana to sing. 
<laughs> at some point, like you, that's not in there yet. So just like write a really good one for her and then find a place to put it. And, Cause and she was going to be that happened. the MC Titus role, Titus's role and her role were one role. Is that correct? Yeah. I guess I can, we can talk about that now, but yes, that was the plan. Somebody else mentioned that somewhere. I, I, Apologies yeah. if I'm bringing that up for the first time. Somebody no, no, else... no, no, no. It's like at this point, who cares? But yes, that was meant to be, and she just she just couldn't do it. She just didn't have the time. I mean, be... so it I, worked. I was shocked she was I mean, in I the just... show at all after winning an Oscar. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was really because she she does love the show. She really wanted to do it. You know, I think that's if if. If it hadn't been, there's no way it would have happened. But she really wanted to be a part of it, you know. And and so, yeah, but that song was 100% written because Julie said, just like a really, don't try to make jokes with this song. Just like write a really good song for her. And and that was my prompt. <laughs> and so, and that Man. ended up being over and done, which just one March Madness. Tonight. One March Madness. Let's see. Someone asked, did you keep any props from the show? I know you kept a lot of props from the show. I Yeah, I've got so much. I actually have one that I have no idea what to do with. I have one of the Fraulein's, one of the neon Fraulein's. I know what you can do with it. Oh, really? Send it to a, me. Send it to you? Yeah. That's um, why Cinco hasn't invited me over to his house yet. It's because I'm going to steal everything. You're going to steal my my. Fraulein's. Well, they said like you should have this, and so they they sent it to me, and I and I'm I'm not sure exactly what to do with it, but I've got I've got so much, you know. You got the fireman's uh, helmet, and the... I have the fireman's helmet. I have the sign. I have all the newspapers. I have records. I have, uh, yeah, I you know I I grabbed all that I reasonably could take. I didn't want to be piggy about it. <laughs> I tried it like I. I have Dooley's cleaver. <laughs> I have. Oh my god! You're uh, making my prop collector heart. Yeah, I, I got some. I got I got some stuff. I have a couple props from the show that you've I acquired. I don't think they're near me that I acquired through various means. Nice. Oh, they're not here. Nothing. Nothing too crazy. Let's see. Are there any musical references that were too obscure to put in the show? I mean, well, I'll, I'll tell you one that like, um, you know, what's that show? It's like basically the musical that's Bob Carroll, Ted and Alice. It's, oh, uh, I love my wife. I love, I love my wife. Did so you have a Monica joke in there. So, well, I wanted, I had pictured at one point when I first started writing season two, I thought I want, cause that like Tony performance <laughs> stuck with me. It's just like the four, for those who don't know, like you can look it up. I love my wife, Tony performance, but it's like two couples in bed together. And it's about like about couples swingers. contemplating swinging, you know, <laughs> with another, like their friends or something. And, um, and as soon as I saw that, I thought, oh, Cecily and Keegan and Fred and Jane <laughs> in bed together <laughs> singing a song, like singing a parody of that would be amazing. Oh my God. And ultimately that went away pretty quickly. I just couldn't figure, you know, figure out how it was so contemporary compared to, you know, that was, that was also like a struggle because that was, there was, was that season two or season one? This is season two. Oh, and so Still, Fred was originally going to be in season two. Yeah, that was going to be in season two. Like I was thinking, oh, Jane and Fred will be a couple. And then we can do company and we can do uh, I love my wife, but it was not to be. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything. I mean, certainly we we had in the writer's room, like John Tolan's Julie Klausner, they're both like, their knowledge of musical theater is pretty encyclopedic. And so they would pitch things often. <laughs> I would say, okay, we cannot do jokes for like two people. Right. <laughs> we have to assume uh, like, you know, so. No, like, uh, you know, so but, long 174th street references or. Yeah. 100, 100% like John Tolan's pitched like 25 <laughs> jokes that were too obscure. I cannot, <laughs> obscure, I can't remember them now, but they were, <laughs> They were in there for sure. 
What do you mean no one will get the skyscraper joke? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, believe me. He, he's got a million of them. <laughs> That's so wow. funny. Um, let's see. Everyone's talking about an auction. Everyone, an auction, an auction. Oh. Every, everyone just wants your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's, a good, that's say, a good place for Fraulein. Just hang it up. Auction that baby off. Yeah, I don't think I could get approval from other people in the household. <laughs> well, I'm just telling I'll keep it nice and safe for you. Yeah. Okay. Any specific... What about the props? like they saw uh, some other ones but somebody's asking about sheet music for season one and season two isn't well, there season one, we have a whole book season two yeah, season i think one's out most things are available but all but not physically only digitally they wouldn't commit to a physical book for chicago sadly wow there are a couple of like choir arrangements. There's a talk to daddy choir arrangement. There's an over and done choir arrangement. I've yet to hear a choir do that. One of those, that would make me happy. Any choir directors out there. If right? you, if you, if you uh, lead a high school choir. Someone earlier in the comments said they did a song in their choir. It was, oh, they it did? was back a little bit. Someone I thought said something they did. Uh, I'd have to scroll back it corn through it. Too. I think they did corn pudding. How we change, maybe? <laughs> At the beginning, maybe? I don't know. My school choir did How We Change for our spring concert last year, and it was a blast, said Liz. Oh, nice. Yeah. that's That makes me happy. I, I, I tell you, like, high school theater kids doing these songs, just, it's the best. Someone said, if by some miracle season three sees the light of day, can Mark have a cameo? I think he's earned it. Ha ha. Your payment's <laughs> in the mail, Kate Cass, for saying I mean, that. It depends on where we shoot. If we're shooting, if we're shooting here. I'll come to Vancouver. <laughs> Are you kidding? I told Jaime for season two. He told me when you guys were filming, I said, I will come to Vancouver. And he even emailed one of the producers, but I think with the whole COVID thing. Well, also, I mean, there's like not being Canadian, you would have a hard time getting to work, you know, getting because it's work. Yeah. On camera. Well, I would just I mean, for season two, I was just going to hang out. Oh, you're just going to hang out. OK. Yeah. I just wanted to be there and annoy everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we were our plan was to do Toronto for season three. So it would have been closer. Oh, sorry. You couldn't get rid of me. <clears throat> Let's see. Apple got wind of that. And so they said, we just have to cancel the show. That's it. It's all my fault. We don't want Banani around. Can't do it. He's too. No. no. He'll steal it all for his world-renowned breakdowns. Mm. Would you ever write a licensable version of Schmigadoon for high schools? Yes. I want to. Hmm. Hey. It would make a... Now, would it just be season one? Yeah, I would. I mean, I've thought about it a lot. So so in my head, there's a, a stage version of season one. Yeah. And then if that went well, then we would do season two. It'd be the first successful stage musical ever. A sequel. Sequel. Stage musical ever. Oh. There's it would never been a be successful. the first successful stage musical based on a TV show, maybe? Well, Adam's Family, is that based on the TV show or the cartoon? No, that was really based on the comic. SpongeBob, though. I mean, I don't know. Oh, that you SpongeBob, that there you go. But, yes, that's yeah. right. SpongeBob beat us to it. Well, now I've yeah. the point. Now I won't Forget it. it. Freaking SpongeBob. <laughs> uh... All right. Is it about time to wrap up? or? Oh, the... somebody's asking about up... do you have any upcoming projects that aren't? Schmigadoon. Schmigadoon. I have a new TV show that I'm going to go pitch soon, which is also a musical. Ooh. So, because I love musicals, but this will be more of, I don't know how much I should say about it. It's semi autobiographical and it's set in a certain time period and using 
known existing songs from that time period. Oh. With potentially a couple of originals thrown in there. So, so I'm pitching this soon. And so we'll see what happens. But hopefully I'll get to do another TV show. Because I love doing this one. There you go. And then just just work Schmigadoon season three in like the fine print of the contract. Just yeah. somewhere in there buried. Look, there's I have been approached by many people who actually have the ability to do thing, you know, things about some sort of presentation, right? Of season three. Or just make it a stage show, you know. That would be a first, the first like sequel <laughs> to a TV ah. show that anyway. That would be historical. So yeah, which is reason alone to do it. But yeah, so that that could happen. So we'll see. But yeah, I'm sort of focusing right now on that on, this. on that uh on that new TV show that's a musical that near and dear to my heart. So yeah, everybody put positive vibes. Fingers crossed. That Good thoughts. We'll get to do another TV show. Use the think system. And maybe Mark can have a cameo in that one. There you go. You need a guy that gets run over by a car in episode two. Get no. Mark in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to keep you all night. I know everyone's, I'm sure, asking a bunch of questions I've forgotten or I haven't seen. Sorry, everybody, but thank you so much for doing this. Oh, there's oh. one thing. I just remember what one thing I wanted to say and I want to address. Uh -oh. I'm probably stupid to address this because like many people don't care about this but i saw some comments and it and it and it made me think oh i sh maybe i should explain this which is happy beginning at the end right when josh and melissa go back into the real world josh we see applying the stuff he learned from the tribe to his job oh i uh, right? i think i know what you're talking about yeah and then melissa just gets pregnant right and so some people have said like that's that's it for melissa like shouldn't she get to shouldn't we have a shot of her performing or something? Mm -hmm. And so that was originally in the script. She was performing at Marie's crisis. So we saw Josh with his thing. And so we saw Melissa at Marie's crisis. And Cecily saw that and said, that doesn't feel right for Melissa's arc. Like performing. She said, like I performed in Melissa got to perform in season one. She's and she's performing in season two. So for her, that was like a false arc or like not mm. enough of an arc for her character. For her, it felt like her characters, it's sort of like her character wasn't progressing in a way, or it wasn't really like doing much. And because originally that was all it was, it was those two beats. And it's like, there they are, they found like outlets for happiness. And so like Cecily was concerned about that. And it got me thinking. And, and like the more and more I thought about it, the more I felt like, yeah, she's right, because Melissa is kind of already a performer in season one and in season two, like if she just does this, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so it didn't seem like enough for her. And so I started to think about like what it could be. And because really Cecily thought like maybe it's my turn now. And 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 Melissa's journey is more about confidence and self confidence than, than it is being about a performer. getting to be a performer, right? And and that really like stuck with me, and that felt right. And it was really a loss of confidence, which was at the beginning, the opening to the season, right? Mm -hmm. Like everything's beating the schmigadoon out of them and losing confidence. And it's like trying to get pregnant, and they can't get pregnant, and they get the horrible news that it it didn't work and so in my mind it's like they're so they're giving up and so basically i thought okay so she gets her confidence back and it's like let's try again and so that was the idea of the journey for her. and then, then i thought like oh it's great because we already set up like you know the whole the whole thing with the the gel and the before like as the drudgery of her life let's like call that back but oh, now it's, but it's actually for her Lisa. It, it and did, it's not it got it's not me. like yeah yeah and so so when i thought it, i thought like oh that i got emotional thinking about it 
And then I thought like, that's her journey, like the confidence to like try again and go back and right and try for another happy beginning. And so that's what it was worth. So I, I felt like I should explain that even though probably now it's raising issues that people were <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's good. You That's know, always it's always the danger, but you know what? I don't know. You're looking at the, the comments. Is anyone saying like, I wondered about that or thank you, Cinco, for finally explaining that. No, everybody's left. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's home. still people watching. No, no one, no one is. I mean, I, I remember people yeah. talking about that. Now you mentioned it. I remember people bringing that up. Um, yeah. So I think that I think it's a good explanation and you know, yeah. There, at least in my mind, there was uh, her story wasn't over. So right. like, we're not saying yeah. she's not a performer. She just is a mother now. Oh, but that's not. Yeah, she'll always be a performer. That's who she is. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Hour and a half. That's plenty. Woo. Uh, I'm I exhausted. Appreciate it. You're exhausted. Everybody <laughs> out there is exhausted. <laughs> Congrats to over and done. You did it. Way to go, over and done. I knew you could do it. Yeah. You're all rooting for you. Well, thank you so, so much for taking time to uh, to be on Broadway by Ghostlight today. Uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate all you do for the show. And uh, and hopefully there'll be there'll be more. Yeah, I will. I will alert the fans to any anything I could find. And we'll just keep tweeting that we missed the show until they give yeah. us what we want. All right. But good luck on this new show. I can't wait to hear. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, yeah. More about it. And yeah. Thank you to everyone who watched. I Thank appreciate you. you. All right. Bye bye. All right. Bye, Later. Cinco. All right, everybody. Until next time, subscribe to the channel, like this video, go watch. What did I just release? A, a video on I Love Lucy, uh, the, the operetta episode that's really funny. I have my rink breakdown. Um, more videos to come. I love you all.